Welcome to Arise Church, where we exist so that you can experience God. If you haven't done so already, please click that subscribe button to join our community. That way you can get updated on each week's messages. With that being said, we pray that this message encourages and inspires you to take one step closer to Jesus. There is such a thing as a calendar of heaven. Just like you would plan something and you anticipate it and you look forward to it and you organize things to get to it, a wedding or an event or a new job or a new home. Or... The Lord would actually plan things, put them on a heavenly calendar and then organize in order to get to them. don't know if I even fully grasp what I'm about to say, but I believe it's from the Lord. Since March of 1959, I started in a prayer meeting on a street not far from here, in Brandon Assembly of God. To this moment, there's been a date on the calendar for today. Many people would call this Super Sunday because it's the Super Bowl Sunday. What if it's Super Sunday for Arise Church because it's the Sunday that His glory breaks out? This is that. This is that. We're gonna we're gonna keep going. You can sit down if you want. You can stand up. I don't I don't care. Um. Let me give you some background as we just talk with you for a second. This is that. Six to 12 months ago, something in that ballpark, the Lord started dealing with me personally about using notes when I preach. I'm a big believer in notes. I can be all over the place without notes, as most pastors can. I have a hard enough trying to land the airplane of a sermon with notes, much less if I didn't have them. And it wasn't about the notes as much as it was relying on the notes instead of relying on what the Spirit is saying in the moment. And so, I don't know that you've noticed this. My wife and I have talked about it, but I don't know that you've noticed it. But I've used notes a lot less for a while now. And it was because the Lord, and this is where it stemmed from, and I had told a few other pastors this, but the Lord was speaking to me saying, there's coming a time where when I start really moving, you're going to have to throw your notes out. And you're gonna have to rely on sharing what I'm saying in the moment. This is that. This is that. I don't know where it goes or how it leads, but I've been studying for years and years and years on revival and the last three years specifically in my doctoral program on revival leadership and writing a dissertation right now on leading through revival and how do you steward revival. And this is that, this is that. Yesterday afternoon, I hadn't heard anything about it. It's kind of erupted to me, it seems like yesterday or so, uh, as far as the knowledge of it, but somebody, a friend of mine, a, a local pastor over at Thanoda Sasa, sent me a text. He said, have you heard about this revival in Asbury? And I said, the same revival, the same Asbury is like, they've, they've had a few like moves of God over the years. I've, I've, I've shared their stories before. In fact, I had it in my notes for the Revival Is Now series and it just never came out um, because of time restraints, but the same revivals. He said, yeah, same place. Asbury Theological Seminary back in the day. Now it's Asbury University, which has Asbury Theological Seminary in it. And I'm sure many of you know this, but there's some of you who don't, but Wednesday morning, they had a chapel service at 10 a.m. that hasn't ended yet. Yeah. It is not because they just want to skip classes. <laughs> it's because God's doing something in this Methodist Holiness College. God's doing something and nobody wants to leave the presence of what they're doing. And so day and night, night and day, people leave for a moment, then they come back because of what God's doing there. And, it, and, it, and it, it's, 
I'm just being real raw. Like we're, authenticity is part of our core values, right? Y'all know that. Just being really raw with you. And it stirred something in me that was very deep, very deep. And I, I watched some videos on it and I read some stuff on it and, and it stirred me deeply. And then I, I watched a prophetic video from a, a prophet that, that I respect that was prophesied. He was talking about a prophecy from years earlier that he had given, but he had just recorded the interview where he's talking about it about, well, it was January uh, 24th, so whatever that would be, two weeks ago, something like that. And he's talking about it. He's talking about the coming revival that's going to come. And two weeks before this, he's prophesying what literally looks just like what's happening at Asbury. And it stirred me. He's talking about the youth of this generation. Young adults and teenagers coming to God in droves and miraculous things happening and miracles, signs and wonders, not when somebody's praying over them, but just being in the presence of God and, and touching a generation in a deep and profound way. And it dawned on me, I said, that, well, that's what's happening right here at Asbury. You, you can see the connection very easily between those two. You saw so what we just saw happening at fire night a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, whatever that was, uh, two weeks, two, I guess two weeks ago now when we have all those teenagers on stage and Dr. Brown's prophesying over them and he's not one to prophesy loosely. If he says something, he really believes God is saying it. And he prophesies over them, speaks over them. And it began to touch me really, really deeply to the point I've been on and off pretty much shaking for the last 24 hours because of the Holy Spirit that's just on me. I'm not like, I'm just, I'm just trying to explain what's going on in me because when it goes on in me, it goes on in our church that we talk about revival, but there has to be a time where this becomes that. This is that, this is that. If you don't know that context, Acts 2, the Holy Spirit's poured out and everybody starts questioning what's going on and Peter stands up and preaches the first sermon in the history of the church and right off the bat in that sermon, he says basically that this is not people just drunk, this is not craziness. He says, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. But you gotta understand what the prophet Joel spoke was 400 years prior to this that they're experiencing. But there has to be a time with prophetic words where this becomes, or that becomes this. There has to be a moment where what we've prayed for, prophesied over, talked about, dreamed for, prayed for, longed for, desperately cried out for, there has to be a moment where all of that becomes this now. And on God's holy calendar, there's moments that he wants to work and wants to move and it's up to the church to partner with that moving. I believe we're in one of those moments right now in our church. I hope you're, hope you're getting this. There's a lot to be said, Acts chapter two. You, you know this, you could probably quote it and, and, and I could too, but just for the sake of, just for the sake of opening the word and reading it together. Acts chapter two, I, can, <laughs> I can't hardly open it. <laughs> when the day of Pentecost came, King James would start out with when the day of Pentecost had fully come. There's a date on the calendar. Pentecost was 50 days after the Passover. It's literally the, the, the Greek word for 50, Pentecost. It's 50 days. So the timer started at Passover. Just like you put your turkey in the oven at Thanksgiving and you set a timer for so many hours, the timer started, started at Passover to get to the point of Acts chapter two of Pentecost, eventually. 50, 50 days. You could start the timer, 49, 48, 47, 46. It's going towards an intended outcome where Peter can say this is that. So this timer starts, but, but I feel like this is what the Lord is saying to us right now. In order for the timer to even start it, you had to start with Passover. Passover, you know the festival all the way back in Exodus. It's a festival that's reminded of the original Passover when the Passover lamb or the Passover uh, uh, lamb would be sacrificed and the angel would pass over the house if a sacrifice had been made and sometimes we like to act like there was not a sacrifice made but there was a sacrifice there had to be a sacrifice there had to be death 
in order to start the timer. Don't miss this. There had to be death in order to start the timer to get to where God wants to go. If you want to start the timer to revival in your life and in our church and what God's doing, it starts when you die to yourself. Sometimes we want all the, we want all the Pentecost in the world, but we don't have the Passover. Till we pick up our own cross and follow Christ. <coughs> Until we pick up our own cross and die to ourselves, it kind of starts a timer in our life that allows us to get to the place of Pentecost and the outpouring of the Spirit. But until you can handle the outpouring of the Spirit, God's not going to send the outpouring of the Spirit. And until we die to ourselves at Passover, you'll never get to Pentecost. And we'll cry out for something, and when it doesn't happen, you'll end up with a fake version of something, trying to blend in with others who have the authentic, and you'll try to blend in with them with the inauthentic. But it starts with a death to the self. Don't forget, by, by no means, don't forget that the modern Pentecostal movement started out of the holiness movement. And the holiness movement was all about dying to yourself and living holy before Christ. And out of that came this baptism of the Holy Spirit and this Acts 2 type experience. But you got to start there because the timer started at Passover and until Passover happens in your life. Has Passover happened in your life? You're not going to get to Pentecost. But there's a mark on the calendar. This is that moment in heaven where the Lord is looking. He's saying, this, this, is, this is that. It's, it's going to happen, but it's a process to get to where it is. It's on the calendar. Are you ready? And since yesterday afternoon, I've had this anticipation, this, this inner urgency of fear would not be the right word, but, but trepidation about what this service was going to look like. And some of you think I'm crazy already, so just what this service was going to look like because I just kind of knew in my spirit, I'm like, I'm not going to be able to preach this message that God gave me, which is great. And, and you guys would have laughed and it would have been fun and it, it would have been great. But God's going to interrupt our plans because he has a date on the calendar for our church. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. They were all together in one place. The King James, the New King James, some of those translations would say they were all together in one accord. All together in one accord. They were. Who were? They were. They were all together in one accord, all together in one place. They. They. Well, well you had the 12 disciples who at this point were 11. Thank you, Judas. And you have about 70 or so in this upper room that are all followers of Christ, all disciples of Christ, even though they weren't the disciples of Christ. All together, 70 people. Most of those, you don't even know their names. 70 people coming together from all backgrounds. 70 people whose story started way before Acts chapter 2, way before they're sitting in a room in Jerusalem. 70 people who, who, who Matthew is on the side of the seashore being a tax collector, probably collecting the fish taxes that would come in. And Jesus would say, come and follow me. And he would leave all that and start following Jesus. And his story would start there. But there's a moment on the calendar over here that's going to be a powerful moment. And all of these people are coming from different directions all over the place, all coming together to this one room, to this one room their own life experiences, their own experiences with the Lord, called to follow him in different ways. Some of them spoke directly to him. Some of them may have never spoke directly to them, just listened to his teaching. Called together in different ways, have different backgrounds, different histories, but they're, but they're assembling together. That's why it's going to be the first church. That's the birth of the church that day. All these people assembling could kind of, kind of looks like this room. We got, we got people from New York in this room. We got a few of us who are a long time Tampa people in this room. We got people that speak Spanish. We got people of different colors. We got people that speak a lot of different languages, to be honest with you. We got people from islands. We got people with different histories. Some of you have known Christ and walked with Christ for years, years. Others of you have walked with Christ for weeks. Some of you have had breakthrough after breakthrough in your life of what God has healed you from and delivered you from. By the way, today is Yesterday was, where, where's Noel at? You're right there. Yesterday was no, Noel's 11 year anniversary of being, in, being without narcotics whatsoever, completely restored. Come on. Yeah. 
walking in freedom from drugs. Come on, that's worthy of celebration. Some of you are that part of the journey. Some of you are one year clean. Some of you never did drugs in your entire life and it was never a temptation for you, but you've had other things. And, and all these backgrounds, all these histories, different places, different times, different moments, all coming together like a funnel, all coming down to this, this, this moment, this moment where they're going to be in this upper room. This, this is that moment, this moment that's been put on the calendar by the Lord himself funneling down together all these histories, stories, backgrounds, personalities, styles, coming together for this moment. And they were all together, all of them, in one accord. I've thought about that. What does that mean, one accord? In unity, basically, but, but, but what, they were in unity around what? Because we get in unity around all kinds of things. We get a unity around Thanksgiving, or we get a unity around going to the movies, and we're all in one accord at a movie theater watching a movie. What were they in one accord about? Jesus. Because there's some power about this. What were they in one accord for? Well, all these different people, looks a lot like this room right now, come together in this funnel of one accord. And I think some of it was obedience. The Lord had said, stay in Jerusalem until I send the comforter. So some of it was simply obedience. Some of you are here this morning out of obedience because the Lord has called you to come to church and you've got a system and, 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 and pattern of coming to church and that's an honorable, beautiful thing. So some of it was obedience. Some of it was in anticipation for what was about to come. The timer's still going off, don't get that, don't miss that. It's Passover all the way to Pentecost. The timer's still going and now you're getting to the last few minutes of the timer. It's not unlike your Thanksgiving turkey and you get down to that last 10 minutes or 30 minutes and you start smelling it and you know something's in the air and you can smell something and you're going, oh, there's something coming. Come on, church. Can you smell something in the air here? Can you sense something in the air here? <laughs> I'm talking about Acts 2, but I'm talking about us. So this thing is in the air and this feeling is in the air, this emotion and, and they're all excited and what's coming. And so they're, they're coming into agreement about a belief that God is going to send something that's incredible. They're coming in agreement. They're bringing their faith from all these backgrounds, all these styles, all these places, all these personalities. They're bringing their faith into agreement, the big funnel into the little funnel to go, God's about to do something. I don't know what it's gonna be. I don't know what it's gonna look like. I have no idea what tomorrow, but I can see the timer going. Can, can you see the timer going? There, there's buzz, I, I, I don't know who I'm talking to in this room, but Asbury Theological Seminary is a buzzer starting to go off in one place. But buzzers are about to start going off all over the place because the timer is coming. <laughs> It's a timer coming. And so they come into this unique agreement, this university, this unity out of diversity. They come into this, this unique agreement of belief and faith that God's about to do something great. And they start praying for it. Because that's really the only record we have during those 10 days of what they're doing is just praying and anticipating what God's going to do. I can only tell you over the last 24 hours especially or so, I've just been so anticipating the service because I just have this belief that if we can get ourselves into unity and into one accord just like on the day of Acts you can see us all come together and there can be a this is that type of moment and they came together in one accord there's power in unity church there's power in unity it's not uniformity, because we won't look the same, won't talk with the same accents, won't dress the same, won't come from the same homes, same countries, same backgrounds. It's not uniformity, but it's unity. It's the same as Acts chapter two. And when they found themselves in that place, Acts two, they were all together in one place, not like this, they had come from other places, but they were here in this place. Suddenly, 
A sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them. All of them. So, so, so there's a unity that happens. At the same time, there's a separate thing that happens because each one of them is being filled. Each one of them is being touched. Each one of them is being ministered. Even though we're in unity around one accord, we are actually separated because the Holy Spirit's getting each person as we get in unity. There's a separation that also happens and each individual becomes important when we get into unity. They saw what seems to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them and we could continue to read. I want us to sing that song, uh, Show Us Your Glory, again. And over the next few moments, I want us to get into one accord. I've just prophetically said some things over this church. Probably none of it is radical or new. But there does have to be an agreement around it. Make no mistake, the day of Pentecost had come hundreds, over a thousand times from the original day of Pentecost. It had come over, they had heard it all before. But there was a day that changed everything. You've come to church week after week after week, some of you for decades and years and years, but there was a Sunday. There was a day of Pentecost that when we talk about the day of Pentecost, we act like it was the only one, but it wasn't the only one. There were hundreds of not, I mean, there were tons of days of Pentecost prior to this, but there was one day of Pentecost that changed everything. There are lots of beautiful Sundays. There are lots of beautiful services. There are lots of beautiful moments, but there can be one Sunday, one gathering where we get into one accord that can shift the heavens and change what we're seeing in our midst and all over this room and in this room for weeks and months and years to come. The Holy Spirit can begin coming down on people individually. Deliverance can begin happening just simply from God's presence showing up. Miracles begin happening from God's presence showing up. Signs and wonders happen, not because somebody prays for them, but because God's presence shows up. Peter did not go around laying hands on all the disciples. God's presence simply showed up. And when he showed up, he touched every one of them and endued them with power. There is a spiritual gift that is coming down. There is a thing happening here in our midst that if we can get in unity, it's powerful. It's powerful. It's powerful. So I invite you again, now stand up. If you can, if you're kneeling or like... But we were just singing a song that said, show us your glory. Some of us were just singing it out of our mouths, just kind of lip service because it sounds pretty and it sounds nice. I'm calling us to unity around this right now. When we all get in unity asking for the same thing, God's gonna do something powerful. I don't know what it's gonna look like. I don't know what it's gonna be like. I just know that he's gonna do something. That's all, I don't know the details. I just know there's something about this. I've shared this, it's been a while, but one more quick, I just feel like the Holy Spirit is saying, reminding me of this. Um, Years ago, years ago, I was a youth pastor. I mean, this is probably, I don't know, 18, 20 years ago at this point. Years ago, I was a youth pastor. God gave me a vision and it made no sense because it was over Brandon. That's why it made no sense because I was not in Brandon. I was a youth pastor in Plant City. And in the vision, there was a, what, what appeared to be like a pillowcase that was holding what appeared to be something like water inside of it, like it's just holding it. Think of a, a water filling up and it's, it's filled up like a pillowcase type thing. But on that pillowcase, there was a string. And I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew in my spirit that if we could somehow pull that string, that all of what was inside of that pillowcase would just flood down. Because it was just about pulling the one string that's gonna unravel the whole thing. Y'all know what I'm talking about. And I immediately knew that what was inside of that, 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 that pillowcase type thing that, that was the glory of God. And it was up to us to pull that string, that string of unity, that string of, 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 of coming together and believing 
And if we could pull that string, there was going to be an outpouring in Brandon. And this was years and years before I was ever at this church. It made no sense to me. In fact, I went to people in Brandon and I told them the testimony because I'm like, I don't know what this means, but it's apparently for you guys in Brandon. But I, I just knew it. Let's pull on a string this morning. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. Come on, lift your hands all over this room as you guys begin. Lift your hands all over. Show us your glory. Thanks for watching. If you like this content, would you consider subscribing and sharing this on all your social platforms? We pray that this message left you feeling encouraged and inspired to grow in your faith and to take one step closer to Jesus. We'll see you next week.